Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Leaders Podcast is a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with interviews and advice on building your professional network, brand, and a purposeful second income from students, residents, and innovative professionals. Hey everyone, welcome to Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. This is Casey Rathburn. I am a student at the University of Houston College of Pharmacy and our APHA ASP Chapter President. We are at the APHA Institute on Alcoholism and Drug Dependencies in Salt Lake City, Utah, and my guest today is Bree. Welcome, Bree. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, my name is Bree Hinman. Um, I am starting my P3 year. I attend the University of Houston College of Pharmacy. I am currently the Senior Chair for Generation Rx. I also hold the position of St. Jude, St. Jude Chair for Phi Delta Chi. Awesome. So, um, what did you hope to get out of Institute? So, this is actually my second year of attending Institute. Last year was um, when I attended was very eye opening for me, and this year when I uh, came back, I really wanted to um, dive deeper into my own self understanding as well as learning more about substance use disorders and you know, taking care of ourselves um, mentally and be able to bring that back to my pharmacy school. And um, do you think that as a um, a second year attendee, do you think that um, it's still just as beneficial as the first time you attended? Absolutely. Some of the speakers are the same, some are different, but even the lectures I've already heard before, um, I was able to gain more information now that I am more knowledgeable about some of these topics. Yeah. Okay, so when did you decide um, that you were going to come for a second time? So I decided um, after I actually had some words of encouragement from the senior chair for Generation Rx before me. She did tell me that she did gain a lot more out of attending a second time, and I knew that this is definitely something I wanted to do. I had such a enjoyable educational experience the first time around, and I definitely didn't want to miss out on that. Do you think um, that Generation Rx is what inspired you to come to Institute originally? So Generation Rx was definitely half of um, the reason that I wanted to attend this, knowing that there needs to be an increase in education within the pharmacy profession. I also have personal reasons, addiction within my family, and I wanted to learn how to better take care of myself and those around me and knowing about resources and other things. So what do you hope to do with this information when you get back? I know watching you this past year, you've done a lot through Generation Rx, um, but what do you hope to do now that you have even a more understanding of this? So last year, University of Houston College of Pharmacy actually had our first convocation on the what we call the Utah experience. We took the information that we learned here. We worked with faculty members to bring the P1 through P3 class together and teach them basic terminology of addiction, um, language, as well as have clinical cases that presented um, addiction in certain workplaces, such as the clinical setting and the community setting. And we also want to do that again this year. We felt it was very important. A lot of students gained a lot of knowledge from it, especially um, at a time where we're not learning as much as we should be about substance use disorders. So mm -hmm. definitely want to bring back the knowledge that, that we learn here to our campus and to our community. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a definite need, um, not only in our school, but other colleges of pharmacy to um, increase the knowledge about substance use disorders. Um, where do you see uh, the greatest need in our community in Houston um, for this kind of information? So there are a lot of places um, that needs this kind of information. Me personally, I've worked in retail for a few years and um, most people at some point in their life have, they go to a a community setting to pick up the prescription. So I think the, the greatest need is there, having pharmacists and technicians be able to identify people who need our help, build those relationships, establish that trust, um, get those resources out to those people. Because, you know, a lot of the times we are the bridge between the prescriber and the patient or whatever um, other problems they're having in their life. And we definitely have a huge opportunity to make a difference in their yeah, lives. Definitely agree. Do you think that um, attending Institute um, has helped you be uh, more willing to talk to those patients in a retail setting? Because I know that it can be difficult, especially in a fast-paced environment. Absolutely. Um, for me, I always knew that the need was there, but it's very difficult to initiate those conversations with people because you can feel uncomfortable and you definitely don't want to offend that person or 
make them think that you're being accusatory or judgmental. Being here my second time at the APHA Institute, we've actually gone over conversations on how to make interventions in the community setting, how to approach um, a patient, certain things to say, certain languages to use, um, trigger words to avoid. So it's definitely been beneficial to me. And I feel more comfortable when I go back to Houston, maybe in making some of those connections with patients if they do need it. Can you give us an example of some of those trigger words? So some of the trigger words are um, overdose, especially with things such as naloxone. Pharmacists can um, recommend naloxone if patients are receiving you know, multiple different opiate prescriptions, especially like in a patient that has asthma that could um, potentially have an overdose and one of the um, presenters here actually spoke about instead of telling the patient uh, you're at risk for an overdose, you can say you're at risk for a breathing emergency, your combination of your asthma with these opiates with a benzodiazepine could cause you to be at risk for an, for a breathing emergency. And the speaker, she also compared naloxone to a fire extinguisher. Um, it's not saying that you're playing with matches or that you're going to set your curtains on fire. It's there just in case there's any kind of accident. Um, it's there for your use. Yeah, I thought that was a great way to explain it um, and it, an easy way to present it to patients. Um, why do you think it's so important for us to become educated in this way? We hear over and over again that we are in an opioid crisis in this country and we have a lot of people dying or a lot of people losing everything and they just feel as that they have nowhere to turn to. So it's, like I said earlier, it's very important that people understand that we're not here to judge them. We're here to get rid of the stigma that uh, addiction is a choice. We want people to understand that addiction is a disease and it overlaps a lot with mental illness. And as pharmacists, it's really important that when they come to us, we are non-judgmental in that they feel like if they're ready to get help, we're a resource available to them. Yeah. Um, do you think that you, or do you feel that you've encountered a lot of stigma? Um, do you feel like, you know, maybe in school or in um, uh, the community setting? There's definitely a lot of stigma. Um, I have worked with people and um, I you know, have other students that you, you can kind of tell that they still feel as if addiction is a choice, but a lot of the times it's a lack of understanding, um, a lack of education in, in that topic, mm -hmm. or they might have some personal experience with it that has, that has turned them off to it. And I will say that was the same for me. Um, with my personal experience for the longest portion of my life, I believed addiction was a choice um, how could a person do that to their family? Um, you know, why are they so willing to throw away everything? But it took, took me a while to actually sit down and understand that this is an overpowering disease and it, it changes the way their brain works. It changes the decisions that they have control over. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you talked about uh, mental health going hand in hand with substance use disorders. Um, do you feel... Um, that you also see that, you know, out there when you're educating and um, do what, I mean, could you say, what would you do for patients like that? It's important to teach people that uh, self-treatment is never the way to go. Um, like substance use disorder, mental illness is also associated with a lot of stigma and a, um, a lot of different backgrounds, family and religion, culture, to not talk about what they're experiencing with their mental health. So a lot of people will go out of their way to self-treat, and that often can lead to a substance use disorder. Yeah, and I think um, self-treating, especially in the health professions, um, is a big thing, and I know they pit on that a lot, um, that we're the worst about it. And so knowing that there's ways to reach out for help, I think it's really important. Um, how do you think this experience, you know, will impact you in the future or in others around you and then in your profession? So we actually just had a panel today about um, a few pharmacists introducing what they do. And it was actually really cool because a lot of them have attended APHA Institute. 
as, you know, students P1, P2, P3, and um, they really enjoyed what they learned here, and a lot of them went on to do residencies in psychiatry and, and mental health, and that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. I definitely um, am exploring more career options as I go about this. I, I want to take what I learned here and be able to impact my community, um, whether it's in my career or through policy or through education of um, future students and current stu- pharmacy students. Awesome. Did you get um, from that panel? I know, um, you know, we get a lot of panels like hospital panels, retail panels. Do you think having such a like specific panel like that was helpful? I definitely think it was beneficial. We we have a lot of panels. Like you said, they are very, very broad panels. And I think there is a lot of opportunity in the world of pharmacy and a lot of um, positions that are growing. And I think it's important to inform pharmacy students because a lot of them may be interested in mental health and more specifically in um, helping with substance use recovery. So I think it's important to have panels like these for pharmacy students so that they know all their options and they can do something that they're really passionate about. So what do you uh, recommend for people that want to attend Institute in the future? Um, I recommend just looking into what the Institute is about finding reasons to come. You don't have to be personally affected by addiction to want to come here, to be here. It's it's an, an open community. It's a safe community for everyone that wants to come and learn. And you can, it's okay if you come in with, you know, an opinion that's different than everyone else. It's okay if you still think addiction is a choice. Um, this is a place to learn, to to ask questions, to get experiences from other people and um, it's a great way to meet new people so definitely look into um, what institute is about look at the speakers who are coming um, come prepared to take notes and definitely just stay open-minded yeah I think staying open-minded is a big thing during this entire um, institute and just for the listeners that don't know what Generation Rx is can you give us a brief description yeah so Generation Rx We are in operation through APHA ASP. We focus on safe medication practices for life. So we we target all populations, elementary school children, with teaching them, you know, what's candy versus medicine, teaching them that it's important to um, throw away something that might look like candy as opposed to, like, just eating it. Um, We target the middle school and high school populations about safe medication practices when it comes to reading the prescription label, um, taking medication safely as well as, um, you know, misuse and abuse of other drugs and college and adult population teaching them those same things, but also teaching them what their resources are in the community, um, 12-step meetings, uh, you know, mental health facilities. Um, we also are trying to tackle the stigma that's associated with, with addiction and teaching people what resources are available in the community, um, especially in the lock zone, because a lot of people don't know that's a resource available to them. And a lot of people know a family member or a friend that's affected. And um, I do know some people who are vigilante and they want to carry in the lock zone um, resource on them at all times because you never know mm-hmm. when someone might have an overdose. Do you feel as if being a Generation Rx chair um, – in our chapter has been beneficial for your pharmacy career? It definitely has been beneficial there. We're going to all encounter this. So being generation RX coming to this Institute, having these opportunities has definitely made me more comfortable when it comes to facing a situation like that. It's definitely been um, a resource, a, a training tool for me. So I, I definitely, like I said earlier, I want to give that back to other people, but my position has definitely been very beneficial to my self-growth. Any advice for other students that think they want to get involved in Generation Rx? Yeah, we're online. Um, There's lots of information um, through um, the Generation Rx page. So um, I know at our school, UHCOP, we are making subcommittees for Generation Rx that way that... They may not have a position, um, like a chair position, but they definitely can stay involved. So I encourage all Generation Rx chapters and any operation in general to allow students to be a part of them, even if it's not 
a direct chair position. Yeah, and I think if um, definitely to talk to the chapter president or the vice president of patient care um, to get more information at your school. And also, if you're um, a practicing pharmacist, I know that Generation Rx always likes to bring in um, people to like that and to take them along to educate. Um, so there's multiple ways to get involved. But I just wanted to thank you, Brie, for joining us today and sharing all that information. Um, and thank you again, Tony and Pharmacy Leaders Podcast, for allowing us, um, again, to shed light on this important topic. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Support for this episode comes from the audiobook Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach. With over 9,000 sales in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia, it's the go-to resource to ease the pharmacology challenge. Available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. In print, ebook, and audiobook. Thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. Be sure to share the show with the hashtag #PharmacyLeaders. Hash 